when I was in Barcelona, I had uh, my Leica Q2, my Panasonic Lumix S1R and the Huawei P30 Pro with me. And I took lots of photos, videos and material in order to test the, the 3D devices and uh, playing with it. And uh, there is some material taken with the Leica Q2, which I did not post yet on YouTube. So I'm going to do this right now. And there are basically two things I want to look at. First of all, I was choosing uh, three different scenes through the window uh, at top of the W Hotel in Barcelona and taking lots of high resolution shots and then compiling them later in Final Cut Pro into a 4K time lapse video. I was also using in Final Cut Pro the Ken Burns effect to actually bring the pictures a little more to life. The second thing I want to do is I want to import a few high resolution shots also taken through the windows with the Q2 into Lightroom and uh, they are raw files so I'm going to process them and then look at the level of detail and also how the lens of the Q2 dealt with uh, potential reflections in the window and uh, I'm going to show that too. If you like my video please give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching. So here you see the first scene I was uh, shooting through the window. Um, you see basically the date when it was shot and it was in the early afternoon. Uh, I took manual exposure 1 over 250th of a second. I was using the f-stop of f5.6. Actually 5.6 very often for many lenses is the sweet spot where you get the best out of it and uh, the ISO level was set at 100 and it's the full 40 megapixel resolution. Here is the second scene. I was shooting it and I kept the parameters as they were because they worked nicely for me and then at the very end let's just briefly look at the third scene and then we are good to go. Enjoy the time lapse. We're looking at a photo taken with the Leica Q2 through the windows at the top of the W Hotel at the waterfront in Barcelona. And I imported now into Lightroom the RAW file, the RAW file with the full 47 megapixels resolution. Of course, if we have such high resolutions, we pay a price in terms of file size. So we have 83 megabytes as a file size here. The ISO taken was at the minimum of 50. The native focal length of the Q2 is 28 millimeters, full frame equivalent, and the aperture was chosen at f8.0 and the exposure time 1 over 80 seconds. What I want to do in the next couple of minutes is developing the RAW file, seeing what level of detail we get out of that scene. There is a lot of detail hidden in the scene and I want to see how good the resolution is when you have these kind of more difficult situations shooting through a window. One thing, of course, is immediately eye-catching and remarkable. There are hardly any reflections. You see a little bit of it here at the left-hand side. I think there are some reflections. And in general, you can reduce reflections by using a polar filter on top of your lens. I haven't had a polar filter with me. So this is natively the Q2 and shooting through the window. So let's see what we can get out of that RAW file here. Let's see how we can develop this picture. The first thing I'm typically doing is I just quickly test the auto button here. Let's see how the picture changes. So we get a bit more saturation, a bit more clarity here, but that's not what I'm going to do typically. So let's reset this by pressing Command Z. So we are back. All the um, settings are now in their original setting. And let's see what we can do here. I think the first thing I want to do is probably reduce the highlights a little bit here and uh, get a bit more clarity in the shadows. So we increase this to a level of 30. We do not touch the whites and the blacks at this point in time. I don't want to mess up with color. What I want to have is more clarity to make the picture more crisp. 
And there's nothing bad in using clarity if in your metadata you have an ISO level of 50. If you have a low ISO value, clarity is a very effective measure to actually bring more pop into your picture. You cannot do this in high ISO shooting scenarios because then you will introduce a lot of noise and grain into the picture. A little bit of dehaze and that automatically always brings saturation. If I go to the extreme here, you see this. This is a setting uh, Lightroom I think has for a few years only, but it's a very useful one if you shoot on a foggy day. What it does, it brings more popping up my reflections in the window here and I don't like that. And there are ways to deal with it in Photoshop. I don't think I'm going to demonstrate this here. For the time being, we stick with the reflections here. But as I said before, in general, reflections were handled quite nicely here. Sharpening, I'm not sure I want to use this. This is at a level of 40. Noise reduction, I don't think we need. Let's now look a little bit into the picture, what we see here and what we get. So this is the one-on-one -on -one setting. Uh, we see here a lot of details. If I go further, this is probably the maximum level you can go. But if you look through the picture, you see those people here quite nicely. You see all kind of things at the beach. You see a bike here. Um, I think the level of detail I get out of that picture is terrific. It gets a bit more unclear and fuzzy if we go to the far horizon. But even these houses here and the buildings, they look still quite nice. So I'm quite happy with the result. If I would play here with sharpening, Let's see what happens, for instance, if we go into the city here and reduce the sharpening completely. It gets a bit more fuzzy if we go back to the original level, but if we overdo it, it also introduces grain. Uh, I hope you can see this on the screen, depending on your YouTube resolution. So it's probably best to keep this at the prescribed level. Let's look at the clouds. There is a little bit of noise here and grain probably coming from the clarity setting here. If we want to get this under control, we can just increase uh, the noise reduction here to 40. And sometimes you sacrifice this for detail. I think actually the clouds from uh, the contrast and everything look quite nice here. But the noise reduction filter in Lightroom did not take away the details I'm so keen of to have in that picture. So I think that looks actually good if we look at that. Let's go back to the beach. Let's see what happened here. So we are way off beyond the 100% uh, zoom now and it looks quite nice. Let's go back to, you know, the full 100% uh, and I think this is a nice picture. That's actually a similar building like we have it in London. It's called the Gherkin and uh, I'm quite happy with that picture as it is. Actually in this particular picture, it's not difficult to get rid of the um, reflections here. So we don't need Photoshop for that because we have a lot of blue sky here and I decided just at this moment to briefly show how to do this. So we go to the tool here on the right hand side, the healing brush. We have all kinds of different options here, but um, I choose some size which is big enough for the reflections. I go over here. This is still too big. Let's make this a bit smaller. So I think this will do the trick. No, that's not enough now. Let's go a little farther. Okay, and we click on this one here. We just spare the cloud below that here so that we don't get confused here. And then it's already offering me uh, some copy paste from some other part of the picture. This looks not natural because that part of the clouds is replicated now here. But if we move this to a blue part here, it's actually quite okay this way. We can do this like this here. If you look on the left hand side, you see how the picture is changing depending on where I move this. I think in that way it actually looks quite okay. So we keep it in that way and then the reflections are gone. All right, just a little trick aside. Probably most people have seen this before. You can do this much better in Photoshop with a lot of uh, techniques people demonstrate on YouTube. Um, but in this way for that picture, it will do the trick.